Mr. Caitlin Morelli. Hello, how are you doing? Yo, how How's are going, you, Ben? Dude? It's going. It's going, Good. going. Yeah. Good. How are you doing? How I'm doing great. How are you doing? How how long, how far are you into this? A few hours? Not four, even, four, four hours. hours? Thirty four hours in. Do you have like a fl a flat of Red Bull to That's the right. to the I'm, right I'm, or something? I'm all right now. I have well, I'll tell you what I do have. I have Snackbox, uh, which uh, this is the accompanying song for Snackbox. We have this. Ready? Here it goes. There you go. Figure it out. <laughs> there we go. So that's the accompany. That's that's mainly my snacks. I have uh, coffee, uh, Fanta. <laughs> We've got it all. It's all fine. How are you though? I'm I'm doing great. Just uh, enjoying a nice, super hot day in Vegas, and it's good. I'm. By the yeah. way, I've got to say, I'm loving your backdrop. I love this kind of solid gray thing. Love it. Yeah, it's not even all gray lines. Gradient. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's great. Yeah. It doesn't look that way. That's my great. my head is the gradient. There you right, go. That's right. <laughs> Uh, I saw you, yeah. did a, you, you put a new thing on, I think it was today or yesterday, on your nothing experiment, which is that thing with the card that zooms up. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thanks, oh, man. man. Yeah. Just playing with, I, I actually, honestly, quarantine has got to a point where I, it actually has affected me now where I'm like, <laughs> so everything's just a blur. So I don't, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, it's, it's like uh, Groundhog Day for real. Like every day, kind of feels the same. Days of you know, I think people are craving a sense of structure again. Yeah, <laughs> something. You know what I, mean? that, yeah. I think it. I think it took two full months of quarantine for me to actually get affected by it. But this last week has has been a nice little jolt into my. It's it's been nice because it's uh, it's kind of tested my patience a little bit. I think. And just like my actual self motivation, because now yep. it's like if I if I want to get out of bed in the morning, it's because I have to make myself. Because <laughs> I'm just like, I could just stay in bed and watch TV. <laughs> right, and you know what? That's uh, why like quite a few people say, oh, you know, it's you know, we're doing this 24 hour thing for for mind, and it's really great. And I felt like saying, yeah, but you know what? I'll be really honest. I've had the help, and doing mm. this every night has helped me. So it, I feel like it's the it's a way of kind of giving something back because having this to do every night has every night. I'm like, all right, I've got to focus on that. This time it's uh Kaylin's coming on tonight or this person's coming on. We're going to talk about this. And so it's given me something to focus on. And I have to realize that a lot of people haven't had that same type of focus. Projects are so key right now to stay. Like I find that like, if I sort of lose focus of like what my day is going to be like, I try to just even, artificially put a project even if it's just like making an instagram like it's something that you can not just let the day take over you know yeah so, so sorry if i good. get um distracted but like yeah i'm just getting pinging messages for things no you're good what deal with. um but yeah no i completely agree um even if it's like uh, a friend of mine was saying something very similar but it's to do with making meals he's been like uh i'm gonna start to cook more but cook properly mm. And so he's been just going, right, I'm going to give myself, I'm going to make uh, a, a chili from scratch, but I'm going to, he'd never cooked anything. Like, right, it's right. all microwave, you know what I'm saying? Like, nothing. And so he's like, I'm going to make a chili from scratch. He knows that the first one's going to be terrible because of it, you know, whenever you make something for the first time, it's awful. Um, yeah. And so he's been focusing on making meals. And um, cool. he's probably been getting fatter as well, but that's not the point. But it's, it's something to focus on constantly that you have to think about and craft, which is a useful thing. Yeah, I agree, man. I agree. It's like, I, I think the, the long game of this is just to be content every day and, and just let that be like, you know, not try to force anything or not try to like force, like, uh, I think every time I try to force creativity or force anything, then it's, I end up getting frustrated and I'm just like, okay, I need to just if things happen, they happen, but yeah. Well, it's interesting. Marlo, uh, <clears throat> Ed Marlo used to refer to that as reaching. That idea mm. of like, when you're reaching for an idea and you're like overextending. And I kind of know what that feels like. 
when you're reaching for something, it's not right. It's it's too much. You've got to like chill out a bit. And I remember like um, with quite a few people on here say that like the interviews or conversations that we've been having, um, have been very relaxed and very natural, and we've got some really good stuff out of people. But ultimately, that has come from just being relaxed with it and letting it happen, yeah, mm. as opposed to really trying to. Where, what can we say? You know, none of that. It's just trying to be present. And I think what you said is right. Like, just trying to find a way to be in that space and be present with everything, I think, is much easier mentally, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. Shout, but, out, you know. shout out to Ron. He's hey, in hey, Ron. Well, you know what? We, I think we actually, Ron may or may not be coming on at some point. I'm pretty sure. Yes. Okay. Yeah. At, yeah. Some, at some point. We're trying to announce oh, yeah. basically the next hours at a time, I think, and then <laughs> nice. I'll, I'll work out what the structure is. <laughs> as we yeah, go on. that's cool. That's good. That's good. Did you? Um, yeah. Did you, did you catch the um, chat we had with Copperfield yesterday? I did. I caught most of it. Yeah. It was. It was I liked it. I thought it was like. I mean, I liked hearing about uh, Copperfield's like kind of him talking about making tv specials because to me that's like i mean he's very prolific in and how he you know i look at like copperfield like like tackling tv how uh, magicians are trying to tackle social media right now you know and that's like that's it's just such a hard thing to to crack and he did it so flawlessly for so long it's just yeah, he like... did uh, 17 years straight of doing like uh, specials you know and um thank you uh by the way to uh richard young if he is watching because he he actually gave me that fact i'm just playing but what but what instead of me looking like the, a world famous well like a, a world expert on copperfield thank you richard if you're watching forgive me that mm -hmm. um but uh, yeah, and I think that what was really interesting to me about that chat, and I, I've mentioned it to a few people on so far because I haven't been able to stop thinking about it. If I'm really honest, I imagined that talking to Copperfield, it would be like a lot of kind of party line stuff and I would try to have a real conversation, but it wouldn't have surprised me if it didn't go there because it's the nature of what that is. Uh, right. It's a very different thing. So but the nature of... of just the, sorry the whole copperfield fault. machine and and the yeah, yeah. brand and everything it's a big thing it's not just an individual to some extent so i didn't really know what to expect what i really loved about it was when he was talking about he cut he was constantly talking about mistakes he was constantly talking about instead of going on about his successes or i smashed this or i've done this he was talking about things he didn't like that he did in the past mistakes he made things he needs to do better like it was that mindset of constantly looking for ways to improve constantly. That I felt was something that a lot of magicians, I knew that someone like you would resonate with, I did, a lot of other people, where it's like constantly trying to just do something. It's better. aggressive, like that's that's hard because that's like, uh, that's like, that's a very woke way to think about it because it's like removing your ego and just knowing that it's like a continuous game. And it also, Man, I've, I've noticed too that uh, very few people are, are willing to put themselves out there and make mistakes and learn as they go. But yeah, that's a, that's a really hard thing to do. You know, like it's not obviously like trying to minimize as many mistakes as possible is, is necessary, but yeah, it's, that's a real thing, you know, like, and I agree. when you're doing like, like 17 years of TV special, or was it 17 years of TV specials? Is that what yeah, you said? 17 years straight, apparently. Whoa, uh, maybe that didn't click. That's insane. That's actually okay. also, insane. also he revealed yesterday, he'd done 24,000 shows. What does that even mean? How, know, how, right? do you, how do you comprehend that? Like... 24,000 shows. And also, because this thing, for those people that don't know, I'm sure a number of people will, but you were working like part wow. of that team for a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was wild. Um, yeah. That was, that was four years after I started doing Magic. 
that I, right. that, I right. that that that's that was the really wild thing to me. Like that was a mad obsession for like four years, and then somehow that finesse. I mean, to be honest, though, working with Copperfield was more like a college course than anything for me. Like, I I do believe that I like deserve to be in the room, but I I learned so much from that concept of just like work ethic. Mm. It was insane because his work ethic is like it woke me up to what it actually takes if you want to do something and that's that's just like insanity uh yeah it's, it's wild also there was the 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 he was talking about um well actually blaine said it um and then i spoke to a, a copperfield about it and he said the same thing and chris also confirmed it which is that when they do a, a show or well, they put a new thing in they consider the first thousand audiences or shows of that thing to be the test run. Right. But but then you also have to take into account before it even gets into the test run. So right. there's the concepts of ideas, right? And you've done a 10 hour day and it's 11 or 12. I don't remember at this point. Like maybe it's say it's like 12 or 11 or 1 p.m. Yeah. And they keep part of the last audience in and they do that. And then they do like a Q&A to like get feedback about what people liked and didn't like. So this is after doing two shows a day or three shows a day on Saturday. And then they're running things late at night for people that want it. Like, like it, it's insane. Like it really is like, like work, like, like at times, all that can be said is just people get like you have to be smart how you work but really it's if you're not getting somewhere that you want it's probably you're just not, not putting in enough time because like right. like when you look at that like how many times has, has someone said that oh i went and did three shows and then i did a full rehearsal afterward like uh, it's daily yeah it's wild it, it's wild and uh oh hang on what's this uh all right i'm just being updated about some madness it's great that pinging sound isn't isn't popcorn being ready <laughs> that's hey <laughs> although i would i could do with some um but yeah no exactly and i think um it's what's been so good and uh i think you know i'm I, you know, th really thankful to you uh, to actually come on in those previous 51 days you know it's been amazing to actually watch this process grow and have like so many creatives um talented people there's, there's uh, all these links between our industry between all of us who have known each other in different ways or worked with different people. And what's yeah. really interesting is the same type of themes come out constantly. These ideas about work ethic, about discipline, simplicity. And, uh, and it's been really fascinating to like hear these things echoed and see people's different endeavors and what they're going for. And, you know, we've had a number of people talk to us when, when after our last talk, when you were talking about ethics, when it came to the ethics of illusions yeah. and you know, these constant phrases and things which keep coming out. And so, um, yeah, I don't know, man, I'm just, I'm just enjoying having these conversations with people and you know, it's, it's been so much fun. Yeah. Like it, it's interesting how, like, I really like seeing a lot of the content that's coming out right now. Like since everyone has more time, oh, there's a lot more content online coming out. I always like to analyze like shifts in the community and shifts of things. Like I love analyzing information. So like, it's, it's really interesting. Like right now seeing, I wonder, yeah, I, I kind of wonder like when things start to ease back into real, I'm going to say real life, you know, yeah, whatever that means. Yeah. Uh, like whatever that means after this, yeah. uh, how much sticks around because it's it's i feel like this quarantine gave people permission to just do things that maybe they've had in the back of their mind mm -hmm. just because one is gave a sense of urgency and two it just like it made it took pressure off of things you know because it's just everyone's at home like for some reason it I, I feel like now, like if people are wondering if they should try out something, like it's just like it's the perfect time because there is kind of a lack of pressure that 
I completely agree. And also, there's, uh, there's the idea that you're now competing with everything. There's the idea that you're competing with more than you ever have done. You're competing with every movie, every comedian, yeah. every... However, there's also another side to that, which is that, you know, there's, it's, it's never been more simple and easy and freeing to play, like what you're saying. Like, there, it feels like the frame around it has changed. It feels like there's yeah. some, something, I, I can't work out yet what it means either, but I'm the same as yourself. Something feels like there's a change in the zeitgeist. Uh, aspects of it um, I'm very hopeful about. And there well, are, you know. I, 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 I think it's yet. like an actual change in how, like, the consciousness of the world is viewing things. Because, like, if you look at it in a weird way, like, like the world is now going connecting on one thing <laughs> dude like either coronavirus or quarantine or pandemic like i'm just everyone... probably, i'm sorry i'm just making a coffee but carry on i'm just i'm just gonna oh gonna you got your coffee sorry. maker right there that's, yeah, that's, that's right. wild yeah that's yeah, right. yeah i don't know like alien I... spaceship this thing it's fucking great no oh, it does is that a a, a keurig yeah keurig. i don't know what it is some yeah something like that yeah, yeah, whatever. Some posh coffee maker, but I love it. Um, yeah, sorry, go on, carry on, mate. Oh, I forgot, to be honest. <laughs> <Do you laughs> I know lost what? it. That's, that's, so, that's so bad of me. Uh, that's so bad of me. No, so you're good. Go into some beautiful place, and I just fucked it by talking about coffee. Sorry. Dude. No, as long as you get your caffeine, you're gonna you're gonna keep <laughs> up. You, you got to stay awake to do it. <laughs> Twenty four so hours. So true. No, I think you might. You were talking about the frame, I think, and that idea of like. Uh, the changing consciousness, I think, uh, of, of and how they're viewing things. Yeah, I just think everyone's like connected with one common goal or one common thread now, and like I think maybe that's like what people are feeling. Like it's just like a slight more like it's not necessarily competitive as to me. Like I don't view it as competitive. Where like I kind of think, other than like my personal problems with social media before, like I kind of looked at it as competing with everyone where now I'm just like, yo, you can just, like I'm just posting to post, you know, or doing well, stuff to do stuff. Yeah, and I, 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 know, I know what you mean. And there's, there's an aspect of social media that I always kind of uh, resented in some way, but it was not resented. I didn't know quite what I wanted to do with it. It felt like a kind of, Hey, look at me! And I just, I always felt like I was dipping my toe in and then taking it out again, and then dip, which is kind of you're in no man's land. It's like you should either do one thing or not. It's a very strange process to be half in, half out. And I think that um, there we go. I can stop that noise now. Um, and I think that from this process, I've started to kind of look at it in a very different way, which is that instead of thinking about putting stuff out there and everyone seeing it, right? Now I just look at it and go, well. I'm going to create a little space. And if you want to come in, great. And if you don't, that's okay. So it's, but that's, that's all that anyone can do because right. like thinking that you can reach, like, isn't it funny that like when you post something or when anything goes out online, you're like, ah, it's going out to the world. When in reality, it's going to right. an algorithm where like only like 20% yeah, yeah, yeah. of your followers are going to see it. And yeah, of yeah. those followers, it's not that many unless you're an icon pop like like it, it just really doesn't matter as much as you build it up into your head and but that's just like, like um, the sad a, beautiful a, a friend of mine uh, he was uh he was a bit like slightly older generation who, yeah uh, had a website and he had a blog on this website and he was like oh you know i, I can't put this up there because people will see it and we went hang on listen he couldn't get his head around the fact that literally no one will see it. Like, mm. he's not even on social media. There's no followers. It's just a, a domain name kind of thing. And there's a blog on there. It's like, his mind was like, yes, but it's now gone out onto the internet. The world will see this stuff. I'm like, no one will see it. You might, your, your, your relative, someone you know, if you tell them, might look at it. No one's seeing it. And it's kind of, I realized that that's the same for us as well. Because yeah, I don't even think my family. Like, to be family. honest, I don't even think my like any of my family knows that I have like a social right now anymore. Like my older sister might know, but like it's just like I uh, yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> it just I think that there's like a weird piece with just like being like 
everything probably doesn't matter, but it can matter. It can, it can be fun and it can be like worthwhile, but it most likely doesn't matter. And it's just kind of is what it is. That's <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> it's, it's exactly what it will be a hundred years from now, you know, same thing. So like in different, different platforms and mediums. So it, it's well, you know, we had this. I mean, we, we've had so many people um, that have emailed us, direct messaged, and say, saying, "Man, I had no idea this was happening." And you feel like we've done fifty-two days now, or fifty-one previous today, fifty-two days straight yeah. of every single night bringing on the such a huge variety of people in the business completely different names every single day we've put it on our social media we've put it everywhere and we've you know tried to make it as visible as possible and we still had emails today saying had oh no i just idea. found this and you're like at the end of it yeah yeah and they're like had no idea this evening and you feel like going not that I expected the whole world to know about it but it, it is interesting that everyone is in such small pockets it's in a everyone is in a self-selecting bubble and yeah. um it's working out how to connect with, not connect with everyone, because I don't want to connect with everyone. I just want to connect with all the people that really want to connect with this. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. I was actually having a similar thought this morning, not about like, not how to like, like, how do you get your stuff visible for not to everyone, but just to the people that are, that would fuck with it or would, that would actually, you know, that it could impact or, you know, that they would enjoy. Cause there's always audiences of, of people that, yeah, man, I find so much, the internet's too good. It's just too good. Like, and then that's great. I love it. It's great. Oh, <laughs> really Dynamo's in. Dynamo's just said hello. Hey, Wait, Dynamo right. Magician. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's been cool seeing Dynamo posts too lately. I like that. Like, I, that's like, uh, I honestly like, like I want to, I, I want to get to a point where magicians, no matter if they have had TV specials or whatever, just treat socials like, like everyone just wants to see people do things, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I think that that's cool that like Dynamo is just like posting himself doing stuff like, outside of his TV shows that, you know, he just had air or whatever. And that's... I think the, the, the problem I've always had with social media is that on one level, there's, there's an area of, of privacy, which is that I think that privacy is a real thing that is something that's special. So you mean privacy? I'm just kidding. Or privacy. <laughs> that's right. hey. I'm sorry. Yeah. We just invented the language. Um, <laughs> so but I, I do think that it's a real thing. I think it's a, a valuable thing in the same way as things like respect in the same way i think you should have control of your, your of, of what you give away and sometimes i've always struggled with that and thought to myself you know how much of what is mine is mine and i should keep and how much should go out there and so for example we're doing this every day and going out and being me and talking but there's still large parts of my life that's private and that's not because it's special or because there's anything yeah. secret about it or but it's just like, you know, that happens to be the place I go to drink with my friends that's completely separate from this world. And it's a different thing that I do. And there's a value to that that I think somehow gets broken if you just post everything on social media. So it's there's a strange relationship between yeah. what's valuable and what goes out. And it's not about keeping people out either. It's I don't know what the rules are yet and how I feel about them it changes daily yeah i think there are no rules and i think that with the internet anyone can do or be anyone that they want and that's just like kind of how it is <laughs> like I, I yeah but um yo the uh it was, it was great i said that that 4 ace thing that you you showed I saw like quite a few people like post that. Like I was like, dang, like people, <laughs> they were, they just like cop that. And they were like, yeah, let's yeah. Like, although, let's them... although a few people did it while kind of half exposing the illusion, like that there, there's, there's a way to do it where, uh, yeah, let's see, let's see if I can get it right now. Yeah. I think on, on camera, 
it, like you definitely have to hit it just for, i think in person it probably like it's better. like i mean you can you can hold one card as you know as a, yeah yeah it's like the slight angle the thumb and the first finger yeah so in here yeah that actually hits really hard right now yeah great yeah great um i mean it's and it's not even so i do anymore but you're right in in person it's kind of it's organic it's it's such a strange thing do you do, you do that have you done that live for people does oh, that yeah. does that oh word word so the way i used to do that is i would uh force uh, an ace of hearts and i'd have these set up like this on the bottom so yeah. like this, four series of hearts, and I would give them a pen and say, you sign that. I would ditch the deck, and then I would be set up with yeah. just the three. So I'd be set up in this position. Um, and then uh, and then I'll just take that from them. i say, what is that? Oh, it's an ace. Okay, boom, that would go in. They'd all shake, boom, and then they'd have the four aces. But I used to do that all the time. And, Word, uh, that's cool. It was, it was always hit. There was never a time where anyone, because the expectancy as well of what they're looking at is so strong. It, yeah, I, just, I think back to the first time I saw the humbug trick from Angelo Carbone. That yeah. concept is, yeah, yeah it, it's just too wild. Yeah, so <clears> I love what, it. Because I first saw Angelo do that in, God, man, it was 10 years ago, maybe. Um, and because it, it was basically one card with a flap and it was a tapering thing and i really liked it but i just was my only problem was using a gimmick so i was like how can i possibly do that with no gimmick that's all i wanted yeah. to do was to get no gimmick in that process um because i felt that the fact that it's a naturally occurring illusion you can create that with any deck that that to me was wild i was like well this is this is great um and then to have that double illusion so you can get that from the front but then insert because when you insert from behind, you can still have that thing happen. I loved it. So, yeah, I've just been I'm playing with it for a long time. Um, but, yeah, the credit goes to Angelo for the, the initial concept or the idea of it. Um, but it's just, a, it's just a wild thing to play with something that's so trippy visually. You know what I mean? For yeah. someone like – because you can never experience it. No matter how – if you do it in the mirror, it doesn't matter how good you get it. You'll never, you'll never get that feeling. Yeah, I, yeah. For sure. I think like, yeah, it, it's solid. Like depth illusions, I, I think are such a, I, that's one of the, like currently that's one of my favorite like illusions to, uh, to mess with because I, I feel that it's just like such an under explore, like, like I look at it as like a tool of just like deception and like it, I've, I've found so many diff different applications for it. Because I just I, I refuse to believe that like tilt and a vanishing deck type of thing is the only things that can ever right. be done with the thing that just naturally occurs in the in the brain. Well, there's the thing you of know? like you know the old like reaching into a hat, but your arm disappears yeah. into it. You know that? Like, yeah. They're all kind of like body based things. I think the way you can get that. I don't. You know what I mean? Where your things like that with mime. I think there's there's something I would find very interesting, which is that how far can you push an illusion if you combine it with mime? Because have you ever seen someone do that chair lean where it looks like they're leaning on a chair, but it's not there? It's an invisible chair. I used to try to learn mime, my mean like it's actions because so, it's yeah. I was obsessed. That that probably started my obsession with uh, like optical illusions because like I. I forget. I'm blinking on the guy's name, but he has an insane balloon act online, where it's just his movements and his foot slipping. Like, it really is amazing how intense the illusion is of like this balloon not moving or it being heavy or it being. Lighter. Oh, I've like, seen that. I've seen that. Uh, it's seen just that so. Yeah, it's it's so convincing that. Uh, yeah, it, it really... But if you combine that, instead of it just being obviously mime straight away, if that was somehow combined in a slightly more sophisticated process. So imagine, for example, you have an anamorphic image of a chair, which from one angle looks like a three-dimensional chair, and you are doing a mime lean on the corner of it, right? Yeah, yeah. 
and you then stand up and as the camera moves that becomes flat that will 100 percent look like an edit because the combination of those two forms of illusion i always think that there's something in mixing mime to that level with other yeah. more sophisticated designs which could really produce something where you it'd be almost impossible to unpick what's happened on a deceptive level i i agree that's like uh I haven't necessarily mixed mime in that, but yeah, I think that's like the goal of like my whole optical illusion journey is I think that there's like a point when you can like uh, do optical illusions in a certain way, like hit on a certain vibe that it, it becomes, even when you know what you're looking for, you have to tell yourself that you're seeing something else for yourself to not be fooled, which is like a, a very, odd thing to experience yeah the first time i ever me, experienced yes. that hard in close-up magic i think was with the uh penetrating rubber bands when mm. i when i very young and you can stare at that thing and you're already done do you know what i mean it's quite if you think about it it's actually amazing that you yes. are already done and you're out and they're looking at it and then you just mark you just pull apart and there's a moment where your brain kind of morphs you're gonna go, what? And you don't know what you've seen. And that was the first time I had that. And I remember playing with it thinking, when I read the description thinking, this can't work. You just leave it on yeah, the outside interesting. and stop. Mm. It's like, there's something about, that's the first time I had that hard hit. Yeah. Yeah, I think like, like optical illusions, like at the simplest form, are so good at delaying the moment of like magic so that it becomes something, you know, where it's like the method has happened and then you milk it and get that time displacement to really separate it so that like the cause and effect is just can't be connected, you know, yes. of the effect and method. Someone's just said in here, so uh, Mystic Sly Baba said Slydini was a master. Yeah, I mean, I. I there are many stories of Slidini doing all kinds of things uh, with like doing things of like a lit cigarette, you know, bringing it up and like putting it into his mouth. And someone I know was telling me the story that of, like they said, I lit, I saw it go into his mouth. But every part of the action, the mind was so convincing that that moment when he picked that up, it's the same as the, you know, oh, can you hear me? Um. The audio is playing double. It's actually wild. Okay. Ah, hold up. It's, it's, it, was, it was probably Uri Geller. That's probably oh what my it was. God. So I'm, I'm hearing the delay of everything that was said uh, 10 seconds ago. It, let's let it cook. Right it's pretty, it might, oh, let me, let me jump off and jump back on real quick. Okay, okay, okay. It, it's... <laughs> All right, we'll do that. I'll just cancel this now. All right, there we go. There we go. <laughs> oh my God. Uri Geller is in the system. Fucking with everything. Right, here goes. Right. Uh, there we go. Bring you back on. There we go, Kaylin. <clears throat> Yo. There we that are. That was aggressive. That was aggressive. <laughs> I was hearing double talk and I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> it's okay. too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, uh, overwhelmed. <laughs> uh, no, I yeah. think, um, uh, what was I saying? Um, oh, man. What was I saying? Oh, yes. Yeah, Slidini, lit cigarette. So, you know, I've experienced that before with the Goshman, like with a coin. Like if someone's throwing a coin, like the first time you see that, that kind of, um, it's a, a hallucination essentially is what you're experiencing an expectation based hallucination and i uh, yeah i kind of break it down as like uh your your brain is based off a of memory so i think getting i think what's happening possibly is like your brain is replaying your memory slightly like it's it's just like yeah, it could be a hallucination slightly. I, I don't know, but like when it's done really well, well, I mean, you swear you see, that you see it. If you see something that isn't there, but I'm only, I'm only just, it's very difficult because once you start playing with this stuff, you'll never experience it ever again. Uh, you'll never experience it on yourself. But I remember the first time I saw that done, 
And I, I had someone, you know, literally take and throw that into the hand. And I saw that thing, land. I saw it go through the air, Goshman style, that went all the way through. I saw it land and then the thing disappeared. And um, mm. I have a memory of seeing it go across uh, after the fact, but also in the moment I saw it glisten. And so there was nothing there. So that is entirely projected from in my head. So it has to be a, halluc a hallucination, essentially. Uh, you are projecting into space what is happening. And you can only be doing that based on an expectancy of what the prop is doing, the, the motion of the hands, your understanding That's of inertia. That's a condition. Oh, it's, oh, like it's, it. it's, it's lots of, we look at the world and all of it. And if 99% or if of all of your body language and everything is correct, and the only the 1% that is 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 um, incongruent is the fact there's no coin. Then if ev all the other information, your body language, your head movement, your if that is all screaming the same thing, I think your brain just gives in and just projects yeah, you, into that space. Yeah, that's I, I would agree, and I think having all the things be in congruent, like in alignment, you know, like. Yeah, it's such a weird thing, the idea of being able to like project something that someone can see or like that's a that's a pretty cool thing, like just like thinking about it right now. Like the idea of something so simple as like like a retention vanish, but the idea of tossing it, you know, like that is, is really really cool. But but I I think that idea has got a lot of possibilities, <clears throat> a huge amount of possibilities. Um and I don't really, I mean, I think I described this before with my friend Danny, we were talking about this. I had it with my brother once, we were in the sea that on holiday and my brother leapt out of the water at me. And when I mm -hmm. turned around and looked at him, it, it, I saw a shark, like it, for a split second, it was a goddamn shark. Yeah, I, I think as so, a magician, like if I ever catch myself, like, I think I'm very aware of when I'm experiencing an illusion or something that's not correct, but I try to like stay in it for as long as I can. Like yeah, yeah. I was on an airplane once and I just woke up from like a nap and we were like going over a city and I like, I look out the window and we're like, uh, we're just flying backwards. And I'm like coming out of my sleep and I'm just like, I know this is incorrect. I know this is not real. But everything that I am seeing is telling me otherwise, right? And it took me a full like 10 seconds to reorient, like reorientate my reality to what was happening where we were on a bank and the city lights were reflecting off of the airplane wing. So everything was coming in opposite. Right, so right, right. it was just the trippiest like natural optical illusion that was happening. But I didn't try to like pull myself out of it because I'm just like, okay, obviously we're moving forward, but this is trippy as fuck. <laughs> like, right. what is happening? And like that moment stuck with me for a long time because it was just so, uh, it was so real. And mm. I, I think like uh, experiencing that as a magician is just such a special thing because it rarely happens to me. Ever. Well, you have to indulge it. It's the same um, as when you first experience. Yeah. I, I'll say this to uh, Chris when he next comes on. Kenna, I want to talk to him about how I felt when I first saw Sybil. Because it wasn't a, a flourish cut. It was I saw the packets fl floating out of this dude's hand. And then... Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting perspective. When you said that, I thought about that. And I was like, ah, like the perspective of when someone sees this for the first time. I had no knowledge. No, I had no... I could never be so different way Depending different on their, what they what they know yeah it was way different i i was like they they floated and morphed and moved and then all recollapsed and reconfigured it was like reality had suddenly kind of split and fragmented and then decided to uh, uh, yeah and we, we look at it now and we think oh ch chill out ben it was just sybil but that's because we have a very sophisticated way of understanding what we're seeing I didn't have that. And so I said, well, that's the same as an audience or a layman that's never seen that before. And so we should treat that with a bit of, bit of respect and think that this has that potential to go that far. Right, but imagining what that could be from a layman's perspective is a yeah. intense skill that yes. not a lot of people have.
and that that can be like super helpful in creativity also you know like really trying to visualize what it could be or what it might be similar to you know yep. so that then when you're when you're thinking about like okay what is this what's happening you know it could be really it could be so much more than like what we think it could be you know a hundred percent um, dude, I'm going to have to, we've only got, I've noticed Instagram is telling me we have 52 seconds, funnily enough, 52 seconds. Right. Um, dude, thank you so much for coming on. I quickly, I want to say hi to Fliss. Yo, Fliss, how's it going? I've just noticed you come in. Uh, Alex Pandrea, hello, how's it going? Hey, what's um, up, Alex? Hey, yeah, man. But listen, what thank you so much for coming on again, Kaylin. Um, it's been amazing. For sure, man. Good on luck on your 24 anytime. hours. <laughs> All right. right. We'll exactly. talk soon. Peace. All right, man. Speak to you later. Speak to you later, Kaylin. Oh, man.